Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. If you've never been here before, welcome. My name is Christine. So today we are doing a chat to get ready with me. I feel like I haven't been on here in a while. Thought I would sit down and film me doing my makeup and just kind of get to know me and answer some of the topics that you guys have asked me. So this is the makeup that I wore in my LA vlog. So that is a trip that I took with Pharmacy. They flew me down to LA and it was super exciting. My first ever like influencer event. So if you haven't seen that, I'll link it up in the corner. It's super fun. Anyways, if you guys are interested in seeing the look that I put together for that event please make sure you hit the subscribe button if you haven't already and a little notification bell and let's go ahead and get started I just came from a hair appointment shout out to Joe Bay any of you ladies are in Seattle and you're looking for a new hair guy definitely check out Joe Bay he is the best of the best so I will link his information down below my hair is naturally pretty dark but I feel like all the time that I spend out in the Sun it gets kind of like brownie slash reddish and so we just dyed it back to a true black and I love the way it turns out anyways let's go ahead and get into some skincare that I'm gonna use First off, the pores on my nose are ridiculous, so I'm gonna go in with my Biore nose strips, and these ones are my favorite. They're not that cheap, but I only use these nose strips probably once every like three weeks, so I think it's worth it for me. So I'm just gonna pop one of these on, and then I also have these under eye masks, and these are from DHC, and I'm gonna pop these on and let them sit for about 10 to 15 minutes, and I will be right back. So I was originally going to put on um, eye patches, but my nose strip kind of is intruding a little bit more than I was hoping so I'll have to try out those DHC eye patches next time but I'm going to use my Bosha black luminizing mask and I really like this I've only used it a couple times before but I feel like this is a good like easy mask to throw on before like a big event it won't dry out my skin too much ow I feel like that ripped out all my baby hairs. I always get impatient with these things and I start taking it off way too soon. I'm gonna go wash the rest of this off and I'll be right back. As you can see, I do have a little bit of breakouts and I was on this like trip, if you will, and I was just trying a ton of new products. Every single day was a new whole skincare routine and of course my skin got really mad at me. So now I'm kind of pulling it back and just going back to my old routine and just incorporating like one or two new things here and there and I found that now my breakouts have like died out so I'm kind of just dealing with a little bit of scarring and hyperpigmentation. So that's one thing I learned is if you're trying out new things, you have to take it really slow. And if you incorporate things one at a time, it's easier to tell like what things are reacting badly to your skin. So I went in with my Pharmacy Do It All eye cream and I love this eye cream. I feel like it's nourishing and keeps my under eyes really moisturized, but it also still looks beautiful under makeup. Next, I'm going in with my Drilique Signature Serum, and I have been trying out for this last week, and so far I really like it. I haven't noticed any new breakouts. And then I'm going to finish out with my Tula Aqua Infusion Oil-Free Gel Cream, and I love this moisturizer. It's just super lightweight, absorbs really quickly into my skin, so I love that. Okay, now that my brows are kind of roughly done, I'm going to go in and clean them up. I have my Real Techniques brush. And then I'm just going to squeeze out a little bit of my LA Girl Pro Conceal and kind of just clean up around my brow. Whenever I'm doing my makeup for like for photos or events, I usually will clean up my brow. But in my like day-to-day -day life, I can't be bothered by that. For the rest of my makeup, it's not really going to be like a tutorial. It's going to be more of a like get ready with me. So I'll link everything that I use down in the description box. Next, I'm going to go in with my foundation. And for the event, I used the Giorgio Armani Luminous Silk Foundation. And I got a sample from Sephora. And this one is in the shade, I believe, 7.5, and it's, like, quite dark, but my face has gotten really tan with all the traveling that I've done. I just got back from Hawaii about two weeks ago, and I was there for a week, so I am working on a vlog for that, so that will be up soon. I was in LA before I went to Hawaii. It was just nice to, like, have a short vacation and then see my man who now lives in California. So the first question that I got was from Tiffany and she asked, can you do a YouTube video on how you get your shit together and how you budget, build healthy habits and how you schedule, plan, clean, etc. in a week or something? I didn't get the perfectionist aging jeans and my life sucks because I'm all over the place, but you seem to have your shit together. I feel like a lot of people think that I really have my life together. I just thought when I made my YouTube 
channel that it would be kind of a for fun thing. I didn't think it was going to be like this and I didn't think it would take up this much time and I never would have even dreamt of going on a trip this year. So all of that has just been really crazy for me and then like with my full-time job as a real estate agent, I just have so much going on all the time and... I guess you do have to be pretty organized. So Tiffany kind of said that she didn't get like the perfectionist jeans. Neither did I. My parents are very strict on me. So it's like I didn't really have a choice whether or not I was good in school. I just had to be good. And so I think it kind of helped for them to force me to be such a good student because I feel like that kind of carried on in the rest of my life. But my first year in college, I really slacked off, got awful grades I didn't know what I was doing and I just did a lot of like fooling around and didn't really take like any important classes that I need to take it's not even just something that you're born with it's just something like you have to be disciplined enough when you get home to stay off your phone stay off social media and study and focus on like what you need to do for your classes and stuff like that in college it was more like a learning experience for me and my first year, I was not the best student. I skipped classes all the time and I was commuting from home. So I would take like a one hour bus ride from home to school. I would have like three to four hours of classes and then a lot of the times I would skip and either hang out with my friends or take an early bus home. Like I really was not the best student, but I was like sophomore year and junior year kind of rolled around. I kind of learned that like grades really do affect what kind of majors that you want to get into. And I originally wanted to be a computer science major. And that is a pretty competitive major to get into, especially at my school. I kind of found out the hard way that like if you don't work hard towards what you want, someone else is working harder and they're going to take your spot. There are a lot of things in life where if you don't step up and do all the work that you need to do, you're not going to make it. There's going to be someone else that's willing to put in the work that's going to take your place and you're going to learn the hard way that you're going to have to get your shit together. Sophomore and junior year, like trying to apply into that major and continue to get rejected over and over again was really disappointing and like especially because I still lived at home I, my parents were always on my ass about like how my grades were doing what was I studying was I still doing engineering why wasn't I getting in like it was really hard for me and like I felt overwhelmed because I feel like my parents didn't really support me and what I wanted to do and it was like their own agenda if I wasn't doing engineering I was a failure so I think it was around junior year that I was still trying to apply and realizing that like if I didn't get in that I would have to be going to school for another like two to three years and at that time I was interning down in their IT department and I kind of covered this all in my Q&A video so if you haven't seen that I'll link it up in the corner but pretty much I had decided that I wanted to do real estate and this was like in the middle of college before I had even like declared my major or gotten into computer science without telling my parents like knowing that they would be really disappointed in what I was choosing to do. I kind of just switched and I decided that I was going to do entrepreneurship and study something that I wanted to study and like I was always passionate about like business and running your own business and I just always thought it was really fascinating. I was really scared to tell my parents for the longest time I would just go home and lie to them about it but eventually especially if you have Asian parents sometimes it's better to ask for forgiveness than it is to ask permission and in that case I kind of just said hey mom this is what I want to do whether you like it or not it's kind of my life and I don't want to do engineering I don't want to pursue that path anymore so long story short I pursued real estate as my career and that's something I am still doing to this day something that I really really enjoy doing and love for the longest time she just did not support me she didn't pay for any of my housing and I had moved out and she didn't pay for my books everything I picked up and paid and I didn't have the financial support of my parents eventually there was a time when I was working three jobs so I was hustling to try to cover my ass and be able to buy the things and afford the luxuries that I wanted to have. That's just something that you have to learn is that if you want to do something that your parents don't support, you might have to go off on your own and move out and find out a way to financially back yourself. And I don't know if you guys listen to podcasts, but there's this one podcast um, with Gary V. I love listening to what he has to say. If you have overpowering parents that always are telling you what to do, it's better to be taking a subway from home to work and living with shitty roommates 
than having to live at home and have your parents have that power over you. You know, if you're living under their payroll and they're paying for everything, they have that power to tell you what to do and what not to do or else they stop financially backing you. One thing that you can do, you're able to back yourself and your parents don't have that type of power to tell you what to do and what not to do. If I told my mom while I was living with her that I wanted to quit my jobs, change my major and start up my YouTube, she would have slapped me across the face. My mom is very strict and some, sometimes you just have to do the things that make you happy and if that means moving into a house and having to work two to three jobs just so that you can afford rent sometimes that's what you have to do and so for me it was just that realization that i would rather be working 46 hours a week just to be able to afford my rent but being able to have that freedom to do whatever i wanted to do and not have like my parents leaning over me and telling me what to do and dangling their agenda in front of my face is worth it. I think it's very important for you to learn like the importance of money as far as like budgeting. I once heard that if you can't buy something three times over, you can't afford it. You just have to be financially responsible. And as far as like trips and stuff like that, I maybe like if I want to fly down to California and visit Brandon, like if I go to the mall and I'll see something that like I want, I'll like force myself to not buy it. Long term versus short term gratification, you have to be able to like decide between what you would rather have. And everything is about being disciplined and I'm able to set down things that I would normally buy, stop eating out, like buy my own groceries and meal prep for a week. Um, and then I also have my own coffee machine and I make my own coffees at home. And so all those little things really add up. You just have to be disciplined enough to be able to save money like that and then eventually treat yourself to a vacation. That's when I went to Hawaii and that was the first trip that I had taken in almost a year. So you just have to be really disciplined with what you choose to spend and not spend. Know what you want to spend money on. Know where your end goals are going to be. Like my end goal would be to be able to travel every few months or like twice a year or something like that. So being able to spend money frugally and save money so that I'm able to take all those trips is what my goal is. And then she asked also how you build healthy habits and how you schedule slash plan slash clean. So my life is pretty hectic and I don't really have time for a lot of things. So I'm not a really big morning person so I wake up late all the time. So my day-to-day -day life would be waking up and checking my emails and seeing like what I need to do that day. I always check my calendar too. I write a lot of things in my calendar and if I don't, I will forget. And then I have a table here set up with all of the PR that I have that I need to create content for. I'm not the most organized person in the world, but I do have things set out and laid out in my calendar to make it easy for me. It's just really important for you to just know like on what days that you need to do things and plan ahead. With my jobs and my side hustle that I do and with trying to maintain my YouTube and Instagram, I just don't really have time for a lot of things. I don't sit home. Wasting time is like my biggest thing and like especially if you have goals and dreams that you want to achieve, how could you sit home? and like waste your life away. I'll wake up, I'll be looking at like content that I need to create, I'll look at like product sh shots that I might need to do and plan out in my calendar, schedule shoots with photographers and plan out like content for my feed. But like there's just always stuff to do and I could just never waste time, you know what I mean? I don't watch TV or movies or go out all the time. I would rather be at home creating content, editing a video, responding to emails, doing things that are productive towards my time and my business. It's hard for me to sit at home and waste time. So you have to think about what your end goal is, what you are trying to do. Anyway, so then I'm gonna go in with my ColourPop individual shadows. This one is in the color Millionaire. And I'm just gonna pat this on the middle of my lid. My makeup that I did for the event was not super complex. I kind of just put some sparkles on my lid and I really ha only had like 30 minutes to get ready so I was just super quick with it and I also had eyelash extensions at the time which was really helpful for me like getting ready really quickly. I'm just gonna pat this all over my lid and I love the shadow because of all the sparkles that it has. As far as like my cleaning schedule, I feel like once you move out and live on your own, all that kind of stuff is a lot easier to find the motivation to do because if you don't clean your room, you're gonna have to live with it. Your friends are gonna see it and it's kind of just like embarrassing too. So I think 
once you move out on your own, um, it becomes like your personal responsibility to keep your room clean and your space clean and you have to have more self-discipline. I don't really set days in my schedule that I do that kind of stuff. It's just whenever it gets too much or I have like a little bit of extra free time, I'll just go ahead and do all my laundry, clean, meal prep, and I'll just put like a video on or a podcast and something to like keep me entertained while I'm doing that. To conclude my TED talk, be disciplined, know what you want to have in mind, like what your end goal is going to be and be really disciplined. I feel like being disciplined applies to so many parts of your life, like what you want to achieve, when you want to graduate, like if you want your own place, you need to be disciplined, get a job, work multiple jobs, turn down hangouts, stop going out, stop spending money, get a second job, get a third job. If it means that you're able to move out and have the independence, then that's what you have to do. Once you move out, it opens up so many different doors, like learning to take care of yourself and learning to stay disciplined because if you don't stay disciplined, you run out of money or you start living in some kind of like dirt hole and like your friends just don't enjoy being over and there's just like so many things that comes with being disciplined and it's just something that you learn. I would never move back home even though like I would way rather be living paycheck to paycheck, only being able to afford bare necessities, but in turn have that financial freedom and be able to do what I want to do. I just feel like that's the biggest step that you can take in order to move towards that goal and everything else will fall in place. And for me too, I don't know if people just think that I have my shit really together, but there was a point in time where I had moved into this place to be really like sad about life and like not really knowing what I was doing with my life and what I really wanted to do. And it's okay if you have nights like that, but you have to wake up the next day like not feeling bad about yourself anymore and go out and do something productive with your life. It was a lot of trial and error for me and learning how to cut back on things that I normally used to spend money on and things that I used to spend a lot of time on, learning to cut back and be disciplined. Cause I don't have my shit together. I still don't know exactly what I'm doing, what I'm gonna be doing a couple months from now. But if you have the discipline, I feel like no matter what life throws at me, I can handle it. The next question I have is, how does Brandon like California so far? Are you excited to move? So that was from Rainier. Um, Brandon is loving California. So he actually moved there to focus on his golf game and he's wanting to be a pro golfer. And I'm eventually gonna join him down in California. But for now, I'm just finishing all the stuff that I need to do here and Brandon is really liking California. I feel like the weather down there is perfect for him to be able to golf and especially after graduating and now having all the free time that he does, he's just like so happy. And it is a little bit hard for us being like kind of long distance and it's only been a month. Um, but he calls me multiple times a day in the morning and at night he'll send me a good night text. Um, and good morning and we just get to talk throughout the day which is really nice I love that he's like really communicative is that the right word I'm super excited to move down there I would love to pursue my YouTube career down there and meet some great people and connect with companies that I would not be able to while I'm in Seattle so I'm really excited as soon as I am moved and we're settled down I will let you guys know I'm just excited to be with him all the time because I'm just a very like physical touch type person like I'm a very like spend quality time and be with each other is like one of my love languages and yeah long distance is just not my thing so i'm excited to just be down there with him and both of us being able to focus on what we want to do and then eventually we will be able to buy a house and rainier also asked what's a normal week look like for you i kind of like i kind of brushed on this in my q a and earlier but i kind of like to have like a day or two to shoot new content for my instagram i like to have a day for filming also, and then another day for editing. I just really do not have time to waste, especially now that Brandon's gone, it's a little bit harder. I just feel like I'm constantly bothering my girlfriends and like hitting them up and be like, can you take pictures of me? <laughs> so sometimes I'll hang out with girlfriends and get all like done up and go and shoot some content and come back, edit the content and then plan out what I wanna post for that week. I try to be as active as I can on my stories. So then I'll maybe be on like Instagram stories for a while. I'll say like, 
three to four times a week I'll pop into my office and do my work and I'll just sit there for a couple hours and do what I gotta do and then weekends are for open houses so I'll set a day aside and I'll either film one or two videos like especially if one of them is a get ready with me video I can film like a lookbook or edit a vlog that same day like there's just so many things that you can do in a day so I kind of learned to like multitask I don't really go out that often and I would hang out with my friends my girlfriends like one or two times a week but I try to also go to the gym three to four times a week. The last movie I went to go see was Crazy Rich Asians, which hey, that's a really good freaking movie. I also got another question, how I budget to save up for trips. Like I said before, I don't really take that many trips, but I will save up some money. Like I've been itching to go to California. Trips to LA aren't very expensive. It's like 150 bucks for a round trip. So it's not that much money. Um, so I would just like stop spending money on things that I would normally go like I wouldn't go to the mall and buy a new jacket and new top I also have a Poshmark so if you guys are interested I have a ton of new things that I'm listing I will put it down in the description box but I'm selling a lot of my old clothes that I have I also have my dog sitting business so you just have to like hustle and like you either have to save money or make more money I'm wanting to go to Japan and I have a friend that's working abroad there so we're able to stay at her house so it won't be very very expensive you just have to be able to save money and it's just the same thing as like pulling back on things that you normally spend on and having that discipline to save up money for something a little bit more gratifying than like a new jacket um especially if you have time to watch tv and watch movies all the time maybe watch one less movie and one less tv show Get a little side job that money that you earn from that job can strictly be for vacations i do that all the time like i might take a job that i wouldn't normally take i would go out of my way and take that job and then use that money towards something that i wanted to get Jasmine asked, not really related, please talk about your journey as a YouTuber slash Instagrammer. So I feel like I've kind of touched on this on so many different videos. So please check out my Q&A video if you haven't seen it already. And I kind of talked about like why I started my YouTube. I feel like my Instagram account started out as like cute pictures of me. And I kind of started taking it seriously around like last year, summer of last year when I first went to Hawaii. I feel like that's when my account blew up. I posted like bikini pics and they really blew up and I gained like a big following from that. I just liked makeup and clothing and fashion so I would post like a cute outfit and maybe tag the brands every once in a while if I felt like it. I've always really liked makeup and I've always been into that whole YouTube world so last year when my account started growing bigger and bigger I started posting more like makeup photos and they were not the best like I wasn't even that good at I wasn't even good at makeup at the time and I was posting pictures and tagging brands not really thinking it was gonna go anywhere and like to be honest I wasn't good enough for it to go anywhere but then my account started growing and growing and it kind of developed into this like influencer type role where posting like more outfit pics and like using hashtags and tagging all these brands and stuff like that but I feel like I didn't really start to get noticed until I started my YouTube and I feel like YouTube was like a big transition for me because once I started that, I also wanted to take Instagram a little bit more seriously and instead of just posting cute pictures of me, I kind of like had an agenda of like what I wanted to achieve. Like say I wanted to get like attention from these clothing brands and I would like wear like a full outfit of like Abercrombie & Fitch and I would tag the brands, use Abercrombie & Fitch hashtags and then I started getting noticed and then I started getting emails about like collabs and it kind of just developed into this influencer type role and it just depends on what you want to do with it if you're interested on constantly making reviews on skincare and makeup maybe st slowly start doing that transition and incorporating more of that content on your feed and tagging brands and creating content that like brands might repost and that helps to get you noticed really quickly and that's what really helped me was reposts that was like what got a lot of people that had never seen my account before to like see my page i'm gonna put my hair down because i feel like it's gonna start to get crimpy that's really crimpy so i just threw on a pair of lashes and these are from aliexpress in the style d21 i get a ton of questions on these so i will link them down in the description box um, but what I was saying, no, I can't do this well. 
Okay, so that is what the lashes look like on. They're super pretty. Now I'm going to go in with my Laura Geller Gilded Honey Highlight. This is my go-to. I don't want my highlight to be like booming, so I'll just use like my Japanesque brush. Japanesque. Yeah, it is Japanese. Just do a light layer. And what I like about this brush is it doesn't really pack it on. So anyways, what I was saying was a lot of girls have asked me, one, how to get your followers to engage on your post. I feel like you're a likable, loving person and people start to like your personality. They're going to start to naturally engage on your post. And I have girls that I always interact with on Instagram, like girls that I genuinely love their content. It's not like a fake relationship where like I'm trying to get anything out of it. There are girls that I always like and show love on and I'll like and comment on their posts and eventually they're going to return the love for you. So I just try to be as like supportive as I can on social media and people see that and will end up showing back the love so I just think you get back what you give a lot of the time so if you are supportive on social media girls will return that and if you're like a likable person a lot of your followers will continue to like your posts and watch your stories I try to portray this like persona on social media I don't want to be hateful or like attacking people for no reason i just feel like there are profiles of people online and they just always seem like mad at something you know what i mean so i try to be like this positive image and always be encouraging and supporting of other girls so if people like you they're naturally going to engage on your post and another girl asked me like how you get your like friends and followers to support you like say you wanted to start like your own youtube channel and when i first started i was a little bit embarrassed like what if people didn't like my makeup what if people thought i sucked at makeup like what if my outfit suck and like eventually you just learn to not care because there's always going to be haters out there that like don't like what you do and who cares your friends that like you and care about you will always support you no matter what you do your real friends will always support you if they make fun of you and try to belittle you and talk crap about you and anything negative that they talk about towards your goals and dreams, they're not your real friends. You shouldn't care what other people have to say. When I first started going into that like influencer realm, I was kind of worried that like a lot of my followers wouldn't really care. But if you lose followers, it just means that the type of content that you're creating is not right for them. So let them go. Who cares if you lose like a couple hundred followers. If I lose a couple hundred followers that don't care about my content, that are just like creepy men trying to see like my body, in turn, I gain like five girls that really care about what I do and watch my stories all the time because they're genuinely interested in what I have to say and my skincare routine. I am way happier and I would way rather have engaging genuine followers like that you just have to prioritize what you really care about if you care about followers great that's if you do what you have to do to keep gaining followers but for me i care more about my audience and inspiring people and having followers that care about what i care about so that we can have like a great conversation and i love when i get dms from you guys and we can kind of just like talk about skincare or makeup or whatever topic you know what i mean making that transition from like having a cute fun page to becoming a blogger or influencer you have to be a shameless plug and a lot of times you kind of have to promote across all your social media channels because a lot of the times like your youtube subscribers might not translate to your instagram followers and so i might promote my youtube on my instagram a lot but that's just something that i have to do it's my business and if you want to run your own YouTube business or whatever you want to promote, your SoundCloud or whatever, promote it on your stories and maybe be more engaging on your stories, a story that's more like interactive to get people to be watching your stories regularly. And then that way, when you do promote your other platforms and if your followers truly care about what you do and want to support you, they will eventually click subscribe or follow or check out whatever website you're trying to promote. Next, I'm going to go in with my Mac lip liner in the color Spice and just line my lips really quick. And then I'm gonna finish with my Iconic London Glow Spray. And I was sent this by Iconic London to test out. This stuff smells so good too. And then while that dries, I'm just gonna put on a lip plumper. This is the Too Faced Lip Injection. I kind of feel like I put on a little too much and it's made me look shiny here in the areas that I don't wanna look shiny. So I'm gonna go in with my Kat Von D brush and pick up some of this yellow powder. 
So that is the finished look. I hope you guys enjoyed, and if you did, please make sure you give this video a thumbs up. Let me know down in the comments what you'd like to see next, and as always, thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video. Bye, guys.